In a devastating turn of events, Colin McRae, the former World Rally Champion, had a large accident on September 15, 2007. The motorsport world was left shaken when Colin McRae, a renowned Scottish rally driver, and his five-year-old son Johnny, were involved in a helicopter crash that claimed their lives along with two other people. Colin McRae's passion for rallying began early and ran deep. At just 18, he showcased his natural talent, quickly rising to fame in the Scottish Rally Championship. He aspired, though, for something greater, the global stage. In 1991, McRae joined the Subaru World Rally Team, a dream come true. Within a year, he secured his first podium finish in New Zealand, leaving no doubt about his greatness. Pinnacle of his career came in 1995 as the first British driver to win the World Rally Championship. McRae's fearless driving and extraordinary car control made him a motorsport legend, captivating fans with his skill and his determination. On the fateful day of September 15, 2007, at 2pm, McRae, a private helicopter pilot, boarded a Eurocopter AS350 Squirrel helicopter with his son Johnny, their friend Ben Portelli, who was six, and family friend Graham Duncan. It was meant to be a short six-minute flight from McRae's home in Lanar, Scotland, to a nearby farm in La Hill. Duncan, armed with a camcorder, captured much of the trip on film. After spending an hour at the farm, they prepared for their return journey back to McRae's home in Jervis Wood, near Lanar. During the flight back, McRae executed several complex manoeuvres, flying within 20 feet of trees and ascending the helicopter to high altitudes out of the valley. The camcorder footage revealed the passengers' enjoyment with laughter and excitement filling the helicopter. However, moments after the camcorder was turned off, tragedy struck. The helicopter's main rotor blade collided with a pine tree near Mousewater Valley, followed by a collision with an oak tree. The impact caused the helicopter to burst into flames. The accident happened just 150 feet 45 meters from the helicopter pad near McRae's home where the aircraft was intending to land. Witnesses, including residents of Atlantic, observed the helicopter's flight path. It approached the town from the west before turning and descending into the Mousewater Valley, which ran alongside the north side of McRae's house. People could hear the rotor blades as the helicopter approached to land, but something seemed amiss. The aircraft flew low and fast, losing control and swaying in the air like a leaf in a gust of wind. Panic broke out in those who witnessed the helicopter's approach. The helicopter then rapidly descended, crashing with an air-splitting bang into the densely wooded area at the foot of a steep hill. The impact caused a massive fire engulfing the helicopter. The sound reverberated through the valley, leaving a moment of eerie silence in its wake. Witnesses approached the crash site only to discover the heartbreaking truth. The scattered debris confirmed that there could have been no survivors. Rescue teams rushed to the crash site, but the devastation was immense. The once serene woodland was now a scene of destruction and tragedy. Despite their best efforts, rescuers had no choice but to declare all the occupants of the helicopter deceased. The news of the accident sent shockwaves through not only the local community, but the entire motorsports world. The British Department for Transport Air Accidents Investigation Branch, in collaboration with Strath Police, conducted an extensive investigation of the crash site. Official investigators carefully examined the helicopter's unusual flight path through the valley. While it had deviated from the most logical route between the two destinations, it aligned with the manoeuvres that had been captured on the camcorder footage. It appeared that McRae had chosen this path to entertain the kids on board, however, he was unaware of the increased risks that that involved. The wreckage was later transported to Farnborough for further forensic analysis. The findings of the inquiry shed light on the events that led to the accident. Sheriff Nicholas Stewart, who presided over the inquiry, emphasised in a written statement that for a private pilot, McRae lacked the necessary training and experience to embark on such demanding low-level flying in such difficult terrain, and the decision to do so was imprudent, unreasonable and contrary to the principles of good airmanship and his decision to engage in that risky low-level flying was unnecessary and unsafe. Issues were discovered with the helicopter's maintenance and its operation, and there were pages missing in the flight manual that compromised safety. Weather conditions were favourable, and there were no indications of any impairment because of weather. 
The crash had occurred because the helicopter deviated from its intended flight path, colliding with trees lining Mouse Valley. McRae's attempts to regain control of the helicopter's speed and position within the valley prevented a safe landing. There were no operational or logistical reasons for McRae to fly the helicopter through Mouse Valley as he did. The investigation determined that McRae's low-level flying was both unsafe and unnecessary, and he should have refrained from flying at such low altitudes and speeds. The sheriff rendered McRae's decision unreasonable. The camcorder footage served as further evidence of McRae's imprudent flying. The autopsy and toxicology report showed no health issues or substances relevant to the accident. However, in the investigation, it was found that McRae had an expired license and had failed to undergo a required competency check. The Civil Aviation Authority clarified that there was no evidence of incompetence, but investigated the lapse in the documentation. The final report emphasised the need for caution and adherence to flight protocols. Flying at low altitudes and high speeds through Mouse Valley was deemed very unnecessary and unsafe. The crash's exact cause remained unknown, highlighting the dangers of imprudent flying. The McRae family lamented the absence of a flight recorder and emphasised Colin's commitment to safety. They believed important lessons could be learned with such technology being installed on helicopters. One of the staff involved in the Air Accident Investigation Bureau's inquiry, Sergeant Robert Logan, shared a harrowing account. He vividly described seeing body parts protruding from the wreckage, even amidst the flames and the smoke. Dr. Gerald Murphy, tasked with identifying the victims, testified about the heartbreaking scene that he encountered. He recalled seeing a smouldering small child shoe amidst the wreckage. Additionally, during the investigation, Karen and Mark Portelli, the parents of Ben Portelli, confirmed that they had not given McRae permission to take their son on the helicopter flight. After the crash, Colin McRae's father, Jim McRae, spoke to the media, expressing his sorrow and describing his son as a great champion and a great man. He also extended his condolences to the families of the other victims and acknowledged the immense grief that they were all experiencing. The funeral of Colin McRae and his son Johnny took place on September 26, 2007 at Dow Daly Crematorium near Glasgow, Scotland. A gathering of around 200 people, including some prominent figures from the motorsport world, attended the service to bid farewell to the rally champion. Colin and Johnny McRae were cremated together in a shared casket. A celebration of life was held the next day at St Nicholas Church in Lennar. The church overflowed with about 700 mourners, while a crowd of about 15,000 people gathered around it. Large video screens displayed images from McRae's career and his personal life. At the service, Colin McRae's family acknowledged the huge support that they had received. As the motorsport community mourned the loss of Colin McRae, they remembered his unrivaled presence, unmatched driving skills and unwavering bravery. McRae will forever be cherished as an icon who left an indelible mark on rallying. His legacy will continue to inspire many generations of rally drivers to come. If you like this video, please give it a like, share it with your friends, and if you haven't already, subscribe to this channel and make sure to hit the bell icon so that you will always receive the very latest from us.